The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation. Mike Campion here with Amy Collins. This lovely young lady started Queen, Queen, not Queen Sleep, Clean Sweep, <laughs> like a clean sweep 13 years ago, serving vacation rentals. Um, I should know this, but I've forgotten. What part of the world are you in, Amy? Pensacola, Florida. I had a feeling it was beautiful Florida. Beautiful white sandy beaches. So for all of you, and we're recording this January. So if any of you are like, ah, I'm free. All you Canadians, uh, Amy can be all of our hero. And actually, I'm in Arizona where it's semi-warm, but it's still like 40 something. Even when you're at sunny skies, it's still uh, still warm. All right. Um, so Amy is one of our amazing elite members. And I'm so excited to have her on because she is just such a real lady. So my goal for this podcast is just to share her story. So some of you who are maybe doing some of the same thing she's doing, maybe feeling some of the same frustration she felt. Um, a, you can just be like, okay, I'm not alone. And B, she can kind of share some of the things she's done and you can go, okay, I can do this. So, and I was lucky enough to get to personally uh, talk to Amy when she called looking for help. Often we have team members. I actually got to talk to Amy. So I, I, I know her a little better. So I remember this conversation, but I'm, I want to have her, I'll let her share in your own words. What made you reach out? What was not working in your life and your business? What was so frustrating? Like I got to do something different. Um, I was paying my employees way too much and they had reached a level to where they were like cocky. They were telling me what to price jobs at. They were telling me what I needed to charge for jobs. They were telling me, you know, I need this day off that day off. They were telling me what their schedules were going to be. Things like that. And I was just like, I had it. I need some help. So I promise you there is a large percentage of cleaning nation that is either going, I'm dealing with that right now. Or I have dealt with that in the future and I'm afraid it's going to sneak back in. So the short version we call that is the inmates running the asylum, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to talk, I want to make a guess knowing you pretty well, Amy, around why you did some of that. So other people can go, oh my gosh, that's it. And then we'll talk about what you've done differently and how that's worked out for you. So typically, and again, part of the reason I love our niche of owners of cleaning companies is y'all are just generally not exclusively, some of y'all nuts, but most of you overwhelmingly are just sweet, kind people that are looking out for other humans. And we, which is good as an owner, being a kind human and caring about our employees and really want to help other people. That's that's all super entrepreneurial and important, right? If we didn't care about the other humans, it's going to be tough to really be an entrepreneur, making money, taking care of other humans. So that's a good, that's a good direction. It's a good vibe. It's a good start. Don't try and kill that. Because a lot of you will come to me like, I got to be meaner and I got to lay down the law. And it's like, well, A, you're not. That's not who you are. You're never going to be that way. And B, being a jerk isn't the answer. So I think the connection that we make, and Amy, you can tell me if you're resonating with any of this, you're like, you totally missed it, Mike. But a lot of times the connection is, I love my people and I want to serve them and I want to help them and I want to give opportunities and I want to take care of them. We just got this big heart. And we think... um, the nicer we are, the the less limits we set, the less rules that we set, and the more kind of autonomy we give them, the nicer we are. Kind of like, perfect example, I've got a seven-year-old um, mm-hmm. and we try to love them and give them grace and kindness and all that. But we there's also rules and we know if we raise him to be a little tyrant, nobody's going to like him in the world, right? So we try yeah. to make sure that he treats other humans in a certain way that's going to serve him and, and the rest of society. Now, when he goes to grandma's house, who's an amazing grandma, by the way, he's got the best grandma ever. She spoils that little kid rotten, right? Food and whatever. And he's just like, I like going to grandma. She lets me do whatever I want, Um, which is great for the time he spends with grandma. But if we raised him that way, it'd be insane. So I think a lot of times we see our employees as children and we spoil them rotten with no boundaries. And we can all imagine, you know, sometimes grandma gets exhausted. He's a little tyrant to her because she lets him do anything. (laughs) <laughs> we so, do get tired. Yeah. And then again, we've got, you know, we come in as the parents, like, hey, you got to treat your grandma nice. And, you know, we we set the boundaries. So how much of that, Amy, do you feel was because you're afraid? Like, I don't want to clean. If they're gone, I'm screwed. And how much of it was you're just trying to be nice, which hurts even more when they kick your teeth in and take advantage of that niceness. How'd that show up for you? Um, how's the best way to put it? I felt like the nicer I was to them, the more that they would go out of their way for me. 
Like if I been over backwards, they would been over backwards as well. And I caught and thought what I did would be reciprocated and it, and it mm. got to where it wasn't. It was in the beginning, mm -hmm. but then it just changed over time. The longer they were with me, the more they got comfortable in the job, the more they got comfortable pushing me around, you know, and, and then it just got to a level. I just said, I've got to stop. I've yeah, got to stop true. this. I, and I paid you to teach me how to stop it. <laughs> That reminds me of, that, me. <laughs> of that saying familiarity builds breeds contempt, right? Like at first there was that recipro reciprocity and at some point they just started taking advantage. So what, and again, I know our answer, but I'm dying to hear Amy's answer. So a, well, we don't even have to get into consequences. We could spend a bunch of time, but I think everybody listening is like, I know how crappy that feels. And it is even worse because now there's two dynamics. There's the business dynamic of, man, you're really just running me ragged. And the personal dynamic of, I tried to be really nice and you, you kick me in the teeth for it. Like that's that sucks. So there's that kind of the personal hurt and the business hurt. So what, as you've come in, what have you done differently that served you better that uh, perhaps could serve Clean Nation? Oh, you know, my cost of goods was 95%. I paid my employees almost all the job. And um, you taught me about cost of goods, what it needed to be. And I hired new employees at new prices and I made a tremendous amount of money like immediately. And all I got was yes, ma'am. They were on time. They did a as good or better job than my other employees that were getting paid more. And it was like a whole new attitude. And I was like, Oh my God, he just opened my eyes. I need like five more Laura's and I'll be a millionaire, mm -hmm. you know? Well, and not just, I mean, the money's great, but I'm, I'm more interested in you and your life getting better as opposed to them making your day-to-day -day experience of your business miserable. I love you being like, I, I might actually love this business again. So what I'm seeing is, and again, a lot of us have, most of us have either been a kid or have kids. So I think most of us will get this again with the seven-year-old, not that our employees are, are children, but they're humans and humans mm -hmm. when they're younger, just tend to act more unvarnished. You can just see like their real beliefs. So they're, they're great examples. So my little seven-year-old drives me nuts sometimes because I'll ask him to do something and he'll not do it. And then I'll say, Hey, if you do it again, I'm going to put you in your room or take away your screen time or some, something he knows he doesn't want. Yeah. And, you know, as an adult man or woman, you're like, well, I won't do that thing because I don't want to lose that privilege or I don't want that negative consequence. And he does it almost just to be like, what are you going to do, old man? And yeah. the funny thing is like his mom will do a little more and she's a much kinder human than I am. She'll do a little more. I'm going to count to three and like threatening and whatever. And he just keeps pushing. That. And he, yeah. And he just keeps pushing. <laughs> and the problem is not only is it frustrating for mom, he's miserable. So when I finally, hey, blah, 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 you know, coming with the dad voice, yeah. I'm like, da, da, da. You'd think he would like me less or, you know, it would break our relationship. It's the opposite. No. He's dying for something. He's like, I'm seven. I don't know how to manage my life or make decisions. So when right, he right, starts right. trying to assert authority and no one and everyone just lets him go, he's like, I don't know that I'm qualified. He does, he's not articulating this in his mind, but he's got a feeling of I'm out of my depth here. Who's in charge? I can't be in charge. I need someone to set some boundaries. So when I go, hey, here's what we're going to do. Sit down. Go to your room. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. You'll cry for 10 seconds. And when he comes out, he's happy as a peach. So not only is he better behaved, but he's happy. So I think you're the way you were paying your people and giving too much authority in the business. So you get all the money and you get all the decisions and you get everything. They just kept pushing, like, how much can I abuse? And they started nice going, this is super sweet. And then they're like, well, what if I want a day off? Or what? And they just, and they see the other people do it and they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. And we think if we're just nice enough, They'll get better, but they're just like my seven-year-old. They're like, I'm not able to run a business. That's why I'm an employee. I'm not qualified for this ownership job that you're giving me. And they just start acting crazy talk. The new people go, hey, sit down, shut up, sit there. And not that you're being that rude, but they know who the authority is and they know who's setting the rules. Like, oh, thank goodness. I can just come in and clean and go home. And I feel comfortable that this is all handled. But when you weren't taking leadership, your people are like, I guess we're in charge. And then we have the inmates running the asylum. Am I mischaracterizing? Or is that how that felt? You gave me company culture. You know, okay, I didn't that. have before. Um, so before, like, I never had meetings with my employees. I just had phone conversations or I'd see them on a job and talk to them. And you were like, okay, you need to have meetings. And when we got them all together and they sat down and ate together and they all talked about their problems, they're like, oh yeah, well, this property needs this and this, and they were solving problems together. And they seemed to be having a good time. It helped bring team together. 
and they were happy, you know, that was doing price increases, which you coached me on. And they're like, oh my God, she needed to do that. You know, they wanted more money, but then they were happy to give me money back that they had never given me before, the old employees, um, because of the price increases. So I wasn't working for free anymore. You know, because so, I was paying all my overhead, all my insurance and everything, n not making any money when I went, I would go and clean and I would be cleaning for free to pay all my overhead to give everybody else a job. And I was so tired, so tired. And, and the company culture changed. Everybody had a happy Im image. They go to work excited. They were putting out better work. You know, uh, they were reporting with me better, communicating with me better. I'm here. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Pictures of every property. So I saw what it looked like. So I promise you there's dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands right now listening going, oh, I want that. That sounds so good. If you could sit down and talk to them individually, I mean, we're talking to one to many, what would you say to help them get from when they're at to where you're at? Well, it's like a lot of stuff. The, the biggest thing you taught me was core values, you know, and I struggled with that for three weeks. I rethought it and rethought it and rethought it about who I was and what I wanted my company to be. So, I mean, you really need your structure to show them how to do everything, like their, their client funnels, their, their website making, their landing pages, the client attraction. I got two elite clients paying me $3,000 a month based off your good, better, best. I just took it a step further and went elite mm. and I so, made killer money. So I love that. And I hate to be such a tease and put that out there and not dive into it, but I want to stay on the, the, the culture focus. So uh, and great job on that. But that you said such a, the two words I'm hearing from you, uh, if I had to distill down Amy, are culture and core values. So I'll tell you how I saw it. And then you can kind of tell me like, yeah, that, that was how I experienced it or correct me if I, if I misspeak, but the way I saw it is there, what there, and by the way, there isn't getting a culture. You have a culture, same thing. People are like, I need systems in my business. You have systems, the systems you have just are getting you the bad result. The system could be when anything goes wrong, Amy jumps into action and works 24 hours a day. That's the system. That's it's not is. a good system. Yeah. So yep, same that was culture. Me. It's not like you didn't, or any of you don't have a culture. You have a culture. It's just not an effective culture. So the culture that I heard Amy describe before was effectively slave labor. Amy was the slave and the owner and the cleaners pretty much, I don't want to say pimped you out. That's a little strong, but pretty much just took and took and took until there was nothing left to take. You get the jobs and you collect the money and you pay us all the, you, we get all the benefit and we'll tell you when we can show up and how this thing goes. And we're going to run the whole <laughs> business without any equity or when anything's hard, you handle yeah. it, Amy. But yeah. when it's time for the money, we're here with our hands out. So that was a culture of, if I had to pick a word, entitlement is probably what I'm hearing. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. And if anything, yeah. I don't want to get political, but if any of you guys don't love the way our, our, our country is going, because this works in small organizations, big organizations, city, state, federal entitlement is not a great culture for any, any group of human beings, regardless of what side I have one cleaner say, I'm only doing Airbnbs. One saying, I will not do a deep one saying, um, I, I just don't have time for that. If it has spiders, cockroaches, rats, I'm not walking in. These, you're making my skin crawl just saying that, Amy. So what most people do, and then we're going to contrast it with what you did, Amy, and then that'll probably be all the time we have. Um, what most people do is they try to whip themselves up into being what they would consider mean or tough. Or I got I to gotta get tough. Um, but the problem is Amy, she acts tough sometimes. She's not. She's a big, sweet, softy. Um, I am. So if I was like, as a coach, Amy, you you get them and you tell them what time they don't you put up. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe if I yelled at Amy and held her and hand he and screamed yeah. at her for, oh yeah, don't be cool. People aren't supposed to know. Um, <laughs> no, but we need it. We well, all but, enjoy you yelling at us, telling us what we need to know. Yeah, the yelling's fine. The content is what I'm getting. At. If I was yelling at Amy, you be meaner, you be harsher. As long as I'm holding her hand and staring at her and screaming at her, maybe she could fake being mean for a second. But long term, it's never going to. It's just not who she is, right? Yeah. So what Amy did was instead of her getting harder or meaner or whatever you want to call it, she just decided I'm going to change the whole culture. So as opposed to showing up with entitlement, being, "Hey, Amy, 
I, here's my hands out. Here's here's my boundaries. Here, here's how here's how this business is going to serve me. She changed it to, to a different culture, and those core culture can be described with core values. So the core values are just the rules of the game that we're playing. Like if I started describing a game where you rolled dice and you had a little thing that you moved around a, a, a square and you bought properties and there was free parking, you could pretty much go Monopoly. I know that game. It's, you know, if I just describe the rules, you kind of understand the game. So yeah. what we have the old rules, which were unintentional, is just Amy be nice, everyone take advantage and everyone's entitled, but Amy. Everyone gets to eat and have yeah. a life, not Amy. Amy pours out her life so everyone else can have what they want old culture, what what are your new core values that you ran the company with and how did you make that shift? And I think that'll be about all we can cover on today. Hardworking, honest. Hold on, hold on right off the bat, Hard, like line, line in the sand drawn. So before when the culture's entitlement, I don't work Saturdays. I don't do this. I don't do that. Here's the work that I'm willing to do. If the culture's entitlement, shut up and sit down, Amy, you chip chop and, and provide me a job, right out hard work, so when I go, I don't work Saturdays, you go, well, this might not be for you because right off the bat, the rules of the, like, I don't play games that involve dice. Well, I guess Monopoly is not a game for you, right? We're not going to argue with me about dice or no dice. It's just like, here's the rules. If you don't want to be a part of this game, go play yep. somewhere else. So I love oh, right off the up. bat, hard work. And then you said honesty. Honesty. What else? Um, help others. So again, they had the, you help me, right? They had the old core value was Amy help Mike or Amy help cleaner. You change it. No, we help each other. Like I just, I'm love. You're giving me goosebumps, Amy. Just going from these are just the opposite of the culture that you'd unintentionally done, which is Amy help others. Others get helped by Amy. Amy works hard in that I don't have to work very hard and I still get paid. Um, the honest part. God forbid people are lying. What's the last one? Um, God, you stumped me. Um, I should know this by heart. Yeah, um, I studied on it three years. It seems like, um, oh yeah, it was. Um... So let me give an encouragement to everybody what Amy's thinking. Um, so for me and the people that work for me, you could wake me up at two in the morning, have fun, make money, be real help out. Like I got it. It's by rote. Let's that said, most people, when you're starting, it takes a little while, right? Because before the core values that weren't spoken were entitlement. Amy work harder. Mm -hmm. Amy owes employees take. These are all the values that we could do. Um, so I love hard work, take responsibility, take response again, same thing. So these are, it's so cool, Amy, how we never had a conversation about entitlement, right? Like you and I, before this now right. didn't talk about, Hey, the real problem, because we didn't talk a lot about the problem. We knew the problem we talked about. Okay, great. So the cool thing is if I had, if we had to come up with the values that you had before we started working together, I think you'd agree with entitlement. Amy works hard. Amy helps us. And without any talking about what you had, you came up with help others, not Amy help others. Everybody helps each other. Hard work. Amy will work hard. That's fine. But everybody's going to work hard. Like you just yeah, absolutely everybody. knew what you wanted. You just needed to get it out. Okay. Give a uh, clean nation, if you would, the one thing you did to, because obviously step one is getting your core values. So before we had the bad ones that were getting that bad result, you were working yourself to the bone and then you got the better ones, which is mwah. Um, So that's step one. Step two, once you had those, how did you start? integrating those into your current business because you had they were the opposite of the values that you had been demonstrating before that. So if somebody didn't meet a core value, I had a conversation with them about it, like you taught us. And um, I let one employee go and I tempted to leave, let another one go. It was my own sister. I hate it, mm -hmm. but I'm not a core values fit. And I let several employees go. I, let, I mean, not employees, but clients. I, I had clients that I was just like, that's not a core value fit. I don't need them. And it felt so freeing to let somebody go that I had just agonized going to their house every day, you know? And that, I was just like, they're gone. Yay. Let's get some great clients in and replace these guys. Guys, gals, if you're note takers or trying to make mental notes, that's a big one. The day you go, I can fire a client. I don't just because someone has money, they're willing to pay me for my service. I don't have to take it. Like it says, I mean, you started with the baby step of just because someone says they'll clean for me. I don't have to put up with whatever nonsense they have in terms of pay. And so I can tell them no. Oh my gosh. And then you did it. And I love yep. it. It's my sister and I'm not whatever, but the core values are the rules to this game. It doesn't mean you're firing her as a friend, as a sister, as no. someone that you love. No. 
but yeah. you can go this, these core values. If you're going to be here, everybody in this little box has these core values. And if you don't, and the cool thing is you don't have to go, you're wrong, you're bad, you're you're fired, you're a terrible human. You can go, this is the rule. Like, again, if- It's not core uh, values fit. Yeah. If Amy goes, I don't want to play a game that has is money motivated. Okay. I might play Monopoly with other people. doesn't mean Amy and I can't be friends. She's just not going to be in this particular game because she doesn't want to play by those rules. Does that mean Amy's bad? No. Does it mean I'm bad? No. Does it mean Monopoly is a bad game? No. None of those means. It just means she wants to play a game that she enjoys. So I'm going to free her up to do that. Easy piece. What you've helped me do the most was to take my personal feelings out of the business mm -hmm. and think of the business as a business and that was the 100% change for me because mm. I, I owned the business. I thought the baby was mine and it is. But at the same time, I put my emotions and my feelings into everything like, oh, what if this client don't like this? Or what if this employee doesn't like this? And what if they don't? And you separated that. This is how it is. The emotions. This is the business. And that one change changed everything when I separated my feelings from the, what I thought people would think like the monkey mind you talk about so much. Can I take it a step further? Cause I'm guessing a lot of other people feel this way and maybe you did or do to a much lesser degree, not just your feelings, but your identity. A lot of times mm -hmm. it's if my business is suffering or I'm working too hard or like a lot of identity, like I'm a good person and I'm a good leader. So I'll take a bunch of crap from my customer's employee. Everyone can just dump on Amy because that's who I am. And I think that's why when you're able to fire people that aren't a good core values fit, even if they're your sister or fire customers, even if they're willing to give you American money in exchange for the services you provide, your identity goes, oh my gosh, Amy's in control of Amy. I get to run this ship. I get to set the rules. And if I don't want, I can, this is my party. If I want to kick somebody out, I can do that. Like that, hopefully that changed your identity from Amy is doormat that everyone takes and takes and Amy just gives until she drops dead. And I think that's kind of who you are is I'll just keep giving until I got nothing left to Amy's like, Here are the boundaries. I'm, well, if I'm emotionally bankrupt and I have nothing to give, who can I serve? Right. But if I have some boundaries and I have a, a culture and a, a thing that I love to give to, I can give infinitely. But the way that you guys were taken before you're going to give till there's nothing left. And I get up happy to go to work. Yeah. You're just happy. I mean, I fed off your energy in Michelle's energy and Suzanne's energy and all of the people in their group. You know, I just, I loved all the synergy with all of it. I love that. All right. I think that's a great way. I could talk to this lady forever, but um, we try and keep the podcast a little tight. All right. So Cleaning Nation, if this has been valuable, um, growingcleaningcompany.com is probably the best place for resources. We've got 900 podcasts. They're all free. We've got a nice 15,000 member Facebook group. Um, and feel free to email me, Mike at growmycleaningcompany.com and just let me know. I love Amy. We want more of her or what, you know, whatever's, whatever's <laughs> going on, let us know, uh, growmycleaningcompany.com. The best, we've got hundreds of hours of content. The best is probably the 40 minute masterclass right on the, the homepage. It's completely free. Um, check it out, growmycleaningcompany.com. See you there. Well, here we are, the end of the podcast, and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me, but like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.